NBC proliferation continues, despite the reduction in tensions between the United States and the nations of the former Soviet Union. Former director of Central Intelligence Robert Gates summed up the situation when he said, Foremost among our challenges is the proliferation of nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons and related delivery systems. Arsenals all too often in the hands of megalomaniacs, strong men of proven inhumanity, or weak, unstable, or illegitimate governments. Since 1984, the Army has been conducting field and laboratory tests under the direction of a formalized program to determine the factors impacting soldiers operating in chemical or biological environments. Over 30 DOD agencies have had input into the Army's test program, officially called Physiological and Psychological Effects of the NBC Environment and Sustained Operations on Systems in Combat. The program is commonly known as P-squared, NBC-squared. Insights gained from the ongoing program and a comprehensive analysis of the information gathered is the basis for this video. One primary test finding that pertains to virtually every part of the Army is the issue of leadership. Leadership directly affects soldiers' ability for sustained operations under NBC conditions. Leaders must follow the same procedures as their soldiers. Commanders and other leaders must be aware of what happens to soldiers who must operate in MOP for extended periods of time. They should instill confidence in their soldiers that they can survive to fight and win in an NBC environment. Soldiers must believe that they can operate effectively in MOP. Many of the things that happen to soldiers in MOP 4, such as increased heat strain and reduced hearing, vision, and manual dexterity are predictable. Commanders must plan for these and other degradations and train to overcome them to the maximum extent possible. Tests have shown that if units train for extended periods of time in MOP, soldiers will become acclimated and develop ways to work around problems. MOP 4 imposes limitations on the performance of even well-learned tasks. Soldiers' confidence and abilities to perform will be greatly enhanced if appropriate adjustments are well learned before donning MOP 4 under combat conditions. The tests concluded that training is most effective when soldiers are in MOP 4 from 4 to 6 hours and that units perform better when individual and collective tasks are trained over several days. Problems occur over time. It is necessary to train for long enough periods for soldiers to learn how to cope with MOP 4. Tests have shown that more soldiers drop out in the first day of operations in MOP 4 than in the second and third days. For example, an analysis of several tests found that 38% dropped out the first day, but only 19% dropped out the second day, and the rate fell to 12% the third day. Training in MOP for several days just before the operation will give soldiers an opportunity to learn what adjustments they must make and will reduce the dropout rate during the actual operation. A reduction in hearing, vision, and manual dexterity are problems that are certain to be encountered when operating in MOP 4. However, with proper training, soldiers will devise ways to work around many of these problems. For instance, soldiers participating in the test discovered that by using a pencil, they could operate keyboards of teletypes or computers. Other soldiers found that using a piece of tape made it much easier to pick up small objects. The use of more hand signals and identification of individual soldiers with tape on their uniforms are ways to overcome some of the hearing and vision loss. Heat strain, combined with the physical effect of wearing the mask, results in a loss of visual acuity. The mask itself restricts the field of view by 25 to 30 percent. The standoff distance caused by the lens of the mask reduces the field of vision through binoculars and weapon sighting devices. Commanders must ensure that soldiers who wear glasses have optical inserts for their masks. Heat strain is one of the most serious effects of operations in MOP. 
Factors contributing to heat strain include exertion, high outside temperature, encapsulation of individual soldiers, and demands of mission requirements. One result of heat strain is excessive sweating, which increases the need for frequent water intake. Tables in FM 3-4 showing required water intake and work rest cycles have been validated by data gathered and analyzed for years. When forced to operate in MOP 4, leaders must plan missions based on these data for their units to remain effective. For some tasks, it is simply impossible for soldiers to drink as much water as required. And the tests found that those aren't necessarily the tasks that look hardest. In a battalion aid station test, soldiers decontaminating a patient could not drink as much water as required. The average soldier does not feel thirsty until his body is already becoming seriously dehydrated. Therefore, commanders must institute and enforce a command drinking policy. Continued dehydration will result in the soldier becoming a casualty. By the time he feels thirsty, it may already be too late. Soldiers in Mop 4 can lose as much as four gallons of water a day in hot climates. Work rates add to heat strain. Work rest cycles, that is, regular breaks from work, will reduce heat strain. Tables of work rest cycles are found in FM 3-4. Soldiers cannot work for extended periods in MUP 4 without rest, no matter how well-conditioned and well-trained they are. Commanders must know that the core body temperature continues to increase even after work stops. Soldiers must be carefully watched for heat strain symptoms. The environment must always be considered when operating in MUP 4. Outside temperature, humidity, wind, and direct sunlight affect the soldier's body temperature in Mach 4. Clothing is also important. BDUs should not be worn under outer protective garments in hot climates. Mop doctrine offers flexibility. Commanders should employ the lowest level of mop consistent with the threat. Soldiers can perform heavy tasks for a longer period of time in Mach 4 if they are required only to lift heavy objects, as opposed to carrying the objects. When implementing work rest cycles, commanders must pay particular attention to female soldiers. Tests have shown that because of differences in metabolism between women and men, women use a higher percentage of their energy than men use to perform the same task. Commanders cannot expect the same level of physically demanding work in a given time period from female soldiers in Mop 4 as from male soldiers, no matter how well trained and motivated the female soldiers are. Leaders are often among the first casualties. This is because leaders micromanage more and push themselves harder. Leaders don't use their chain of command sufficiently to rest frequently and get enough sleep. Soldiers must have an absolute minimum of four hours of uninterrupted sleep in a 24-hour period for sustained operations. Six to eight hours is preferable. The effects of sleep loss are cumulative. It requires eight to 10 hours of sleep to recover from 36 to 48 hours without sleep. Sleep must be completely uninterrupted. Commanders must plan their operation around this requirement. If they don't, the unit will soon lose its effectiveness. Psychological factors are as important as physical factors. Mental fatigue can be a much greater factor than muscular fatigue affecting the endurance and performance of soldiers in NBC conditions. Soldiers operating in Mach 4 are affected by boredom, fatigue, inattention, and discomfort. These factors can be overcome through leadership, training, motivation, and dedication to the task at hand. Extended training in MOP, regular crew rotation, and use of NBC protected shelters for rest and eating are some of the things a commander can do to reduce psychological stress. 
operational stress occurs under the best of conditions in combat areas. It is magnified in NBC operations. Keeping soldiers informed of the tactical situation, as well as potential NBC conditions, is one way to significantly reduce operational stress. The Army is developing and testing a variety of ways to help overcome both physiological and psychological effects of sustained operations in an NBC environment. Lightweight cooling systems are being tested for the future and better ways to operate in current equipment are being developed through the ongoing testing program. Meanwhile, however, commanders and other leaders must understand the nature and magnitude of the threat that heat stress and other mop-related factors place on their soldiers. They must know the techniques for managing work under NBC conditions and understand and follow the guidelines in Department of the Army manuals for water replacement and work rest cycles. Company and battalion commanders can ensure that their units are prepared to operate in chemical or biological environments by following these guidelines and by correctly training in Mach 4.